Everybody wants to know about fat loss. You know, how can I lean out? How can I see my abs? How can I get shredded? Uh, last week, we talked about building muscles. So this week, we're going to talk about fat loss 101, how to set up your diet, how to track your progress, and how to get unstuck if you should find yourself kind of stuck in the mud. So hop into the passenger seat here, and let's go for a little chat. Fat loss really is the thing that everybody tends to kind of fixate on. And I think the common sentiment here really is like, what's the point of having muscle if I can't be lean to show it off? And that's a fair point. I do think there's a little bit of an order of operations that has to be considered here, which we'll cover in point one. By the way, I'm Darren Starr. I'm a full-time contest prep and transformation coach and getting people lean or shredded is what I do. You can read about everything that I do in the links in the description down below at my website, fivestarphysique.com or at fivestar digital.com for online courses. So point number one is in fact very order of operations based and it speaks to the fact that it really does help to have some muscle on your frame before you try and lean out. A few good reasons for that. First one being what are you leaning out to show if you don't already have some muscle on your frame. Now the amount of muscle that you have is always relative. We're always aiming to gain more over time uh, but also having more lean tissue on your frame increases your basal metabolic rate and at that point, you're burning more just at rest by doing nothing, which makes the process of leaning out that much easier. So if you're brand new, if you're just starting out, I would not immediately jump into a program that's designed to get you shredded. Like take some time eating around maintenance level intake, maybe even, God forbid, a bit north of that, which means of course, discovering what maintenance intake is. There's a whole process for that, but just because you want to be able to build muscle and there's no easier time to do that than when you first start training and start up a program like this where you're following a specific training structure and a specific diet so build the muscle first don't immediately rush into thinking oh i've got to be lean i've got to go into a fat loss mode like yeah there's probably a time for that but it might not be the first move that you make out of the gate next up is i would always approach a fat loss phase we'll call that a cut with an end date or a target date or goal in mind. You never wanna just say like, okay, I'm gonna start cutting now and then we'll see what happens and go from there. Now set a date. Now you might reach that date and feel that it then needs to be modified, but point being you take it in a stepwise fashion. You don't want it to just be indefinite, um, but also having that goal in place imparts a sense of urgency into the proceedings as well. Where if you think, okay, I've got 12 weeks to do this, I'm gonna aim to be perfect on my plan every single day. That's how you maximize the results. And I am making the assumption that if you are looking for seeking out and watching videos like this, you are looking to maximize your results. So that does not necessarily, that, that is not necessarily synonymous with having a sustainable program. So fat loss is not something that's sustainable in the long term. Maintaining a certain level of leanness is. If you're looking to reduce your body fat, that process is not something that's sustainable long term. You can't do that for months and months and months on end. You can't do that for two years in a row. At some point, you get to a body fat percentage and you just kind of stay there. So this phase is not about sustainability in the long term. So yeah, push a little bit, challenge yourself, aim to be perfect every day, but have that end date in mind that's gonna give you that sense of urgency and also something to look forward to and give you like, you know, some red tape to kind of sprint through towards the end. Number three, the science of fat loss is very simple. Uh, you need to be in a caloric deficit in order to drop body fat, it's that simple. Really, you need to be in a caloric deficit to drop weight. We are looking to retain muscle and just drop body fat. Uh, a recent podcast, which I will link in a card up in the corner here, um, went into that specifically. Like, how can we focus specifically on muscle retention during a fat loss phase? Lots more to go in there. Fat loss in itself is very simple. You operate in a caloric deficit, and it's really about how you manage that deficit, which is a combination of the food that you take in and the activity or the expenditure that you have on the output side of the equation. If you wanted to increase your deficit, you could eat less, you could do more. You could do more cardio sessions, you could go for longer, you could do harder cardio, you could take in fewer carbs on a daily basis, you could carb cycle where on your rest days you take in fewer carbs. There are a million different approaches on how you could handle this. I would advocate, especially if you're doing this for the first time, for a more simple approach where you set your macros at a baseline target and let's say 
you know, protein and carbs at one gram per pound of body weight and fats somewhere between 0.3 and 0.5 grams per pound of body weight, that should put you in a deficit. A quick gut check on that is if you take your body weight or if you have significant fat to lose your target body weight, multiply that by 10, that's probably ballpark around where a deficit is. So there's gonna be exceptions for that, but as a general rule of thumb, if I was going to give somebody a one sentence description on how to arrive at a deficit, that would probably be the closest way to do it. So start from that deficit, eat that, follow that precisely along with your uh, step count and your uh, cardio target that you've established for the week, which should be moderate, doing it consistently, but not you know a mountain of it. And then watch the results and then make changes as needed. You know, Take in less, do more. Point number four would be, I want you to focus on your training performance and make sure that it remains high while you're in a deficit. If you have more experience um, with going through these phases, um, it's going to be a little bit trickier for you because you'll be accustomed to you know, higher levels of performance when your calories are high in a growth phase or a maintenance, and you're gonna feel that drop a little bit more when you drop it down into a deficit. Like, you're gonna feel that in the gym sooner, and that's just because of your experience. People who are less experienced might not really notice too much of a difference just because their training intensity isn't quite as high. Um, but, so I would say you want to maintain gym performance or try to increase it. Understand that with greater levels of experience, the likelihood that you'll be increasing performance while you're in a deficit assuming there are no other variables that change, probably isn't gonna happen, but it's something that I think would be good to uh, be mindful of at the very least. And also think about aligning some of your other variables in your program or your daily habits to help facilitate that as well. So take your extra rest days here and there, think about carb cycling so that you get more intake on training days, less on rest days when you don't need it, manage your stress, all that good stuff. So speaking of, the next point here is to really prioritize that rest and recovery. So make sure that you're sleeping really well, make sure that you are taking those days off, make sure that your stress is very well managed. If you watched the video last week on Building Muscle 101, that was a huge component of that as well. Guess what? It's always important. All facets of bodybuilding, whether we're in a, a deficit, whether we're in a growth phase, Recovery, rest, sleep, stress management, absolutely crucial to all of those. Maintaining a high level of output in the gym is really kind of a proxy to see if you're recovering well. So if you are recovering well, you're gonna have a much better opportunity to perform well in the gym. If your performance suffers, that's really the first place that I would look. You know, we need to remain in a deficit. How can we manipulate some other variables, more rest, etc., to help keep that performance high? Point number six is I would track things closely. When I'm in a deficit, I turn into a little bit of a psychopath when it comes to tracking. I'm tracking my weight every day, which is typically always what I do. I'm tracking my steps, I'm tracking my cardio, I'm tracking my heart rate on my cardio sessions, I'm logging my lifts diligently, I'm following my macros closely, I'm monitoring how much sleep I get on a regular basis. Basically, like if you track your weight on a daily basis, you will notice that it fluctuates quite a bit. Um, and when you track all of those other things as well, it helps explain some of those fluctuations. So I've certainly had cases where I would say like, oh, I didn't really drop too much this week. Oh, but it's because X, Y, and Z that are also evident as things that changed in my program's uh, output for the week as well. So usually there's a pretty good degree of cause and effect between those. Also, you can take measurements. When I work with clients, I don't take circumference measurements or I don't have them take it simply because if I don't take that measurement, I can't really trust it as something that I'd wanna rely on. Um, but if you're taking it yourself, you can certainly do that. And then of course, progress pictures. Uh, ultimately, what we're chasing here isn't a scale number, it's a visual aesthetic. That's what we're looking for. And so if your visual is changing, if you are leaning out on a regular basis and we can see that over the course of two to three weeks in progress photos, that's ultimately what we want. So during a phase like this, you absolutely must be taking progress pics as well. Point number seven, what to do if you plateau. So if you find yourself stuck in a rut, if you're in a rut and progress is not happening, and I would say make sure that you're tracking all the right variables and give yourself enough time to see if progress really is stalled. Oftentimes this could be longer than a week. Sometimes if we just give it a few extra days, sometimes if we wait an extra week, we can see like, oh yeah, it was a slow week where the variables just weren't changing, but now we catch up and now we're there and now we can see progress happening. If you are in a plateau, the best way to approach that, as I mentioned on the outset, is just to modify the deficit, increase it. So reduce intake, 
increase expenditure. Oh, but Darren, you say, what about refeeds? Refeeds are supposed to be the miraculous plateau buster. This is a myth, and it's a myth that has perpetuated uh, for years and years. For There are a few reasons why it seems to work, but it really doesn't. What a lot of people have experienced is a diet fatigue related cortisol spike uh, where because of the systemic stress that they are feeling from the diet, it's weighing down on them. They're getting stressed out, which is causing cortisol to spike, which is causing water retention, which makes it look like everything is stuck. If you just chill the fuck out regarding your diet and don't stress about it, none of that shit happens. So always just remember that you are doing this voluntarily. No one is forcing you to do this. And just be chill, be cool, and know that you can stop doing it at any time. A refeed will automatically give you that cortisol drop and then you'll see that water weight drop, which really does not impact your progress at all. You just see your cortisol drop. And then as soon as you get stressed back out about the diet, as soon as you get stressed out about the diet again, that goes right back up and you're right back to where you started. So just be chill when it comes to the diet. That's the solution. The myth is really born out of how caloric intake will impact your leptin. Leptin being a hormone that kind of governs your metabolism here. The problem is with a refeed, with a single meal or a single day of higher intake, your leptin spikes, but then it kind of drops back down to where it was before by the next day. You know, that spike is very short lived and it's not long enough to get any kind of metabolic benefit out of it at all. So it's really a fallacy to think that a refeed or a cheat meal is the secret to busting a plateau. It is not. The secret is modify the deficit and just control your stress. In a nutshell, that is indeed fat loss 101. It's not too complicated. It is, however, really easy to lose your mind during this phase, which is why, um, as a coach, um, I work with a lot of people who struggle with fat loss, and really it has more to do with program compliance, adherence, and getting something built that feels like something that you can do. So if you wanna read more about my coaching programs, if you wanna read more about my courses, Hypertrophy University Macro Bootcamp, you can check out the link in the description below. Of course, you can check out one of these videos here as well if you wanna watch more about what I have to offer.